Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. Three at three. Uh, today we have uh, labor data. This is going to be amazing. Uh, labor statistics, labor data. We have Andre, we have Aaron, uh, myself, Jamil Medina. Uh, we all work at uh, Data Meaning. Uh, we're consultants at Data Meaning. We would love to you know, share with you or love for data. And if you this is the first time that you've seen or you've been in this show, please know this the, the show is called Three at Three. The idea is for us to share some uh, mystery data visualizations. Why are there mystery? Because all of us have a data visualization that none of us have seen before. You out there have not have never seen it before either. And the idea is for us to start, you know, put, putting some um, questions on the screen and start having a discussion about this visualization. You know, we're going to talk about, hey, is this visualization, do we understand what it's all, it's all about? What can we fix? Is there anything that we can make it better? Is there anything that is confusing? And that's it's all about. You know, it's a very organic conversation. We love data visualization. We hope that you, you know, you learn from this um, the, as much as you can. Um, and it's it's a lot of fun. You know, uh, if you are out there, please know that you in the chat can participate too. We actually grabbed your comments and put it here on the screen. Um, you can share what anything that you want. And if this is going to be a lot of fun, and I hope that that you know you you enjoy it. Um, so first of all, before we start, we put the first visualization. You know, we consider all of us uh, big speakers because we have to go online, like here, like where you're looking at. Uh, Aaron went in there and says labor of statistics because today we're you know we're the theme is uh, Labor Day, and we found something incredible that we want to share with you before we start with the first visualization. So Aaron, what what do you found? Yeah, so uh, in next Monday, this coming Monday is Labor Day here in the U.S. So we thought, let's try to do something labor related to theme it out to that. And uh, so I, all I did was type in labor statistics. And, and this is how I find all these these charts and stuff so that, so that I can see just an array of things. And man, look how many pie charts there are. Exactly. There's one here, there's one here, here, here. I mean, it just goes on and on. I don't know what it is about labor statistics uh, that they just love pie charts. Maybe it's uh, uh, they want to see a percent of total or something. But if anybody knows me, it, I can't stand a pie chart. And I, it, just, it was weird just to see how many there was. Donut charts, colors everywhere. Uh, it was just interesting. So that, I just wanted to point that out before we get started. And it's amazing. So what will happen is we learned, you know, Andrea, Aaron and I, we learned that when we were looking for this type of visualization, you know, labor statistic or salaries or things related to labor, we found that there were so many uh, pie charts. You know, it seems like the individuals that work with this type of data, they just love pie charts. So we're here to help them change that. And I see Felipe, Robert. Oh, my goodness. Marvin is here. Marvin, thank you for being here. Um, and this is this is amazing i mean we're gonna start and i'm gonna start right now with my visualization you guys need to be ready for this because this one is one of the most confusing visualizations i i ever seen and that's what i wanted to bring here you guys ready so what you got oh my god you're gonna be you're gonna be crazy you guys are gonna be crazy um so here <laughs> this is incredible so you know, you don't imagine what happened. So I found this visualization, but there is a good news. Okay, I have some good news for you. I have the actual fix to the visualization. So what happened is I have another visualization with the same data. Okay, that I'm going to show you how to fix it, how to make it better. I'm not going to say anything else because Aaron is go now. Aaron, I'm going to put the, the first um, the first question out there. Okay, Aaron, Aaron is. is I see in your face, you're saying, man, what is this? What did you mean did it to me? So That's because I know the, the first question is just like, what, yeah, what, what do I like? And uh, so I'm trying to think of uh, <laughs> what I can say. Uh, I, I like the color That's red. Uh, you know, okay. So we're looking at uh, top 10 salaries from a weird uh -huh. range of only 143 to 241. Um, we got uh, all, the, uh, all the jobs around the outside. We have a... Uh, what looks like a pie chart on top of a pie chart uh, infinitely. There's like seven there. Mm -hmm. um, I do. Uh, okay. So, so if anything, uh, again, I'm trying to find things I like uh, at each of the titles has their uh, salary range, like right underneath it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did notice like some of them only have two salaries. The senior manager has two salaries. The directors only has two salaries. So like, I, I don't know how many the others have. I don't know what the the size here is of, of the survey or however they got this information. Like how much data are we looking at? I don't know what those. Ellen, can we make it larger so they can see it better? Um, okay, okay, that's better. Thank you, thank you. Okay, yeah, so as far as, as far as what I like, <laughs> I, I think that's about it. Okay, okay. So, Andrew, do you think anything that you, what is, it? I don't know, I, I see your face. What is this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I like it though that at least at the top of the visualization, we have lead software engineer that looks like to have the the highest salaries here, <laughs> but it's difficult to, to see everything because it's so many categories at the same pie chart. But at least the left side is a little bit better to understand the mm -hmm. data. Mm -hmm. uh, the colors, it's, well, we, we don't have, we have some colors that are very close, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I think. Emil, yeah, do I, you know why there's so many layers of like, like a pie charts on top of each other? I don't know. I mean, that's one of the things where I was really, really confused uh, with this visualization. Uh, I think Len is in the in the in the chat. He Len put it on happy face. Yes, Len, that's that's the idea. Um, yeah, it's 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 really crazy. I mean, this visualization. Um, <laughs> someone says I was preparing for the worst Jamil visualization, and you just you, you fill out all the expected expectations. So that's from Erica. Yes. Um, so you guys know, I mean, that's what I selected this visualization. The good thing is for everyone is I have the solution. I have the solution, but I'm not going to tell you yet. I'm not going to tell you that the solution. Oh, I have Nasir. This is like a pizza party. Exactly. So one of the, the weirdest things for me was I couldn't even figure out what is this blue area here. So you guys see this blue area uh, here. It's really hard to understand what it's all about, right? This, this one here around here, it's really, really hard. And also, and I was very confused with why there is two, um, two um, images here in this one and in this one, right? What are two images there? It seems like this was a salary and maybe only two people uh, answered that on those two. There's also, this is a lot of ledgers right on top of each other. So if, if you think about it, it is really confusing to have something like this and like this here, what what is what are there so all these ledgers? It's completely crazy. It's it's nuts. Uh, we're getting some uh, from the chat. I'm sorry, Ryan. The pieces are the ranges. It might work better as a line graph. Okay. Um, Andrew Kim. He says this is really a 360 gotch chart or something like that. Oh my goodness. Um, and, and Jamil, <laughs> what about these gray arrows that we have some values, but we don't have any info about? Mm -hmm. Do you see uh, behind, for example, directors and product managing directors? We have a, a range of uh, uh, just a value there mm -hmm. between product product manager director and directors in the, yeah, the, the 206. Yeah. Yeah. 206. Okay. Like the bottom. What, what is there. what is that? Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of those. There's one, two, three, yeah, six, four of between, them. Yeah, between mm -hmm. this one and the third one, the directors, we have a mm -hmm. a data there, a value two o six. Where is that? Yeah, it's and there's a dotted line there. Why why is there a dotted line there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super confusing. I mean, that was the idea. You know, this visualization is that we wanted to show you how can how confused could this be, right? And so, tell me something, um, Aaron. Let's start with Aaron. So we we all said, you know, already that you know we're super confused there's no doubt that this is this is not what you want to do with data visualization there's no doubt so what do you would you do Aaron what do you think we can start making some improvements here 
from this visualization? What do you think? If it's, it's possible. <laughs> if, the, if the goal of the pie chart is to see the percent of total, then I mean, you could put it in a, uh, you know, you could you could put all those together in a, in a just a single bar with all the, the groups in, as different colors, but then you have way too many colors. Mm -hmm. um, but perhaps they should uh, separate these. Don't put them all together. Put put a group of mm -hmm. them together. Put like the managers together and the directors together so that you're not trying to look at everybody compared to everybody else because it's not, it's not feasible because you have so many data points here that, that don't mix. Correct. Okay. Okay. So what, what do you think, um, Andre, that anything that we can do just to make it better? I mean, this is the type of chart that, or the type of visualization that we, you may have to react. Honestly, you know, we always try in the show to say, if we don't have time, you know, you just make this, or this fixes and then put it out there, uh, or do minor adjustments. But in this specific case, this is something that you cannot show because <laughs> it's way too many things that are, um, that is hard to understand. So what would you think? Yeah, I would su suggest or use the same approach that Aaron said using a bar graph or at least a mm -hmm. uh, line graph, right? Where we can see, for example, the highest uh, categories at the top and we can see all the the order, right? By mm -hmm. the, the highest value to the, Minimum to the lowest value. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I think it, some people insist in pie charts when a bar graph or a line graph uh, is <laughs> the most the the best option. Yeah, you see yeah. a lot of, of, of bar of bar charts and stuff because you know that's for the most part the eye the brain is is easier to understand the length of a bar rather than the circumference of a circle, and it's not not real sexy. It's not something that uh, you know screams at you like this does but sometimes the, you, you got to show the right visualization for the data that you have okay okay yeah i don't want to say too much about okay so, okay perfect thanks len because i already seen the the fix for this but it uh len says seems like a simple horizontal vertical bar chart will show this data best wow I mean, Len, you're surprising me. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say too much, but I, I've seen how you can fix it, and I've seen how we can fix it. Um, so let's do that. Let's, let's. You guys are gonna be very impressed. Let's see. So what did you do? Did you, did you fix this, Liz? No, I, I didn't fix it. I just found the fix. So that's the, that's how you can fix it, right there. As simple as that. That's how you can fix it. It's super simple. Like similar to what Lana Tulu said in the chat, all you need is just break them apart like this. The the size of the bar is the range of the salary. And now it you can see it so much better, so much easier to understand. That is good. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like uh okay, so yeah, it seems like uh oh. What is that? Who's who's there in the chat? Who, who's this person? Oh. I'm here to talk about it, guys. <laughs> three of three. Yeah, who's this person? This, this, is, is, this is Wednesday. This isn't Taco Tuesday. Oh, come ah. on. <laughs> Fine, I'll just stick with the hair then. <laughs> so, Mr. Kin, Mr. Kin, what, what do you think? I think this is awesome. Definitely I've changed some colors here because we don't really know what to focus on with all this red. Or maybe it's uh maybe it's these sunglasses here. There we go. I can see a little it's better. Still red. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. When we're looking at these these bars, I mean, I definitely want to see uh something also related to maybe how long these people have been working, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm always there... I'm always curious. Uh, trends in almost anything so like this is for what year do we even have a year on here but what was it last year what's the what's the percentage gain or decline um in in those salaries mm -hmm. the, we have something from the chat that i never thought about uh, thanks ray for for being here i really really like this as a data visualization kind of like best practices i really like that ray 
Um, it's, he said, first design step, does it beat bars? If not, stick with the bars. Awesome. Thank you, Ray, for, for being here. That's um, great. This is great, yeah. Um, I have someone, um, Beatrice, she says, this fix every clean and clean. <laughs> and this is very clean. Clear and clean, I'm sorry, clear and clean. And Roberto says, this is so clean. Um, exact, exactly. So, you know, that's, that's, that's what we want to learn here. You know, like, why do we have to do that visualization? When I was looking at the, that visualization, the original one, I said, how can I call it? I call it, I, I think I call it the beauty and the beast. It's beauty, but it's a beast to understand, right? So there is no way that you can understand that visualization. And as you can see here, it's just so much simpler, uh, simpler to understand. And it's just the objective, like like uh, Victor, Victor Leonis is in the chat and he said, that's the objective, right? Information that should be important than the sign chart and to be easy to understand. And what is here? Um, so that's, hey, that's the main idea. Yeah, go ahead. Emil, uh, uh, last week we had, um, and we did like data plus women. So like that, applying that here would be great to see what percentage of that bar are, is held by women and, and what percentage is, is by male. So uh, a couple of little tweaks to, to the, this redo is uh, would be nice, but much better than that first one you showed. Exactly. Well, I think it's something else that's really interesting in here is let's take a look not just at <laughs> the data that they're trying to present from a visual perspective, but also um, on the bottom, mm -hmm. I, I do want to bring to the attention that they did a good job with a footnote because like you can see senior manager has such a huge range, right? Mm -hmm. And there's really only two data points that exist there. Mm -hmm. So uh, calling in that there's limited availability of data is extremely important, especially when we're specifying uh, salaries, right? All right. So if there's a limited number of people with those titles, we need to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, just like with the US Census, right? Any population information, you need to be aware of how you're representing it because mm -hmm. there could be outliers that exist there or having that minimum sample size mm -hmm. uh, means that you're not getting an accurate representation. Okay. Well, and Emil, you able to do those, those cuts mm -hmm. that you're looking mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. Emil, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, but in, in the, the other one, the pie chart one, yes. weren't there two that only had two respondents? Because this That's only true. shows that there's one yeah, it seems like, let's see, where's the other one? Okay, yes, I think you're right. I mean, I think that you were absolutely right. Um, it seems like there was, so, sorry to bring this back, this ugly thing, but <laughs> but you, they what they did, they put two right here yeah. and two. Yeah, they so only have two, two directors and two senior managers, but in their redo, they only they only did one as having two Correct. salaries. Mm -hmm. So I'll go back to the, the fixed one. I want to see what they have for directors. And and maybe Jamil, that answer why you are seeing two persons on some mm -hmm. icons and one for others. Yeah. Yeah, that the directors is, is the other one with with only two respondents. And look, that bar is, is almost as long as the the senior manager one is. Exactly. Exactly. It seems like Robert Robert loved the the tool. He said that he likes the 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 little icons over there, <laughs> but uh, the film the male and female figures. He said before. Stick figures. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we 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 can use them here and somehow, but not too aggressive, you know. In this new in the redo, um, Sen, and I think that he says that. Um, let me see who's um. Some somebody over there says hard to take Andrew seriously with that hairdo. <laughs> um, Don't worry, guys, I got more of them. This one's only the beginning. Yeah, yeah at least the beginning. Square. I I can wear the crown too. Correct. <laughs> Correct. That's for the Taco Tuesday thing. Just just don't um, set your screen to maximize. We don't want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I mean, I, th I think this one is it's, it's definitely great, right? This this is something that we can learn. It's like if you think about it, there's a lot of white space, and also it's it's easy to understand. I'm not sure if I will select this red color. I will prefer like maybe blue or something that is not red, because there is really not. If you think about it, why would you select red uh, if there's really nothing here to? This, this is nothing that tells you this is up or this is down or 
what is the reason for red? I will just select a, 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 you know, a color that is not red, honestly. A blue, I think, will be fine. Um, but it's definitely what we can learn from here is it's very, very simple. And I think, okay, let me see. I have um, some other thing have Ray. He said, Michael Pearl, I agree with you. You could do a bar in bar with one thinner than the other. Exactly. Absolutely. Thank you for that. And Erica, Erica always give us a great advice. Um, she said, color, color male and female within the range will be nice. That will also, also allow users to understand how many people hold that role. A label of that number next to the job category will be good too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the more if this is not, um, you know, this, this visualization is, um, actually not uh, interactive, right? This was an image. Um, oh, we had Kyle. Oh, look at this. Guys. Box of Box of Whisper. It's a, that's a great idea. Yep. Yeah, so you can remove the outliers. That's a great idea. So that will fix the problem with the senior manager. Is that correct, Aaron? What do you think? Yeah, and the uh, director, too. Directors. And the director, too. OK. Well, that's perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. That, that's a great idea. That's definitely a great idea. Uh, who else is here? So Robert says a coordinated color palette is very important. This one is a little stark. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, who else is in the chat? And Michael, anybody else um, that wants to share? And Aaron, Andrew, do you want? Do you have any final, final uh, things that you want to say before we go to the next one? I told you guys mine is gonna be incredible, and I have to fix. Mine was gonna be out there. I had to do it. So Aaron, Andrew, do you have any final final words before we go to the next one? Yeah, so I think one of the interesting parts here is I, I always like reading the subscripts because it, it's really meant to call out what things people felt were important. And the other one that I see here is uh, mm -hmm. all of these salaries are, are self-reported. So when we okay. look at the glass door salaries, right, um, mm -hmm. I'm always looking at as we're hiring people here for, at data meeting, um, do those salaries, is that total compensation or is that just the base salaries, right? Because mm -hmm. um, those two are gonna be totally different. The people there maybe at the bottom, like the product manager could actually be getting uh, lots, lots of stock options, right? Just like mm -hmm. the marketing director. Um, so I, I think it's important to really call some of that out and be mm -hmm. clear in terms of, of your headers. And then also differentiation because some people like right now uh, going into COVID may be more interested in having a nice uh, strong base salary. And mm -hmm. then maybe you're a little earlier on in your career and you're willing to take a little more risk. Uh, mm -hmm. You may be more excited about those stock options and bonuses. Um, mm -hmm. So you don't have as much of a cap to, to work off of in terms of your salary. Perfect, thank you. Excellent, excellent, excellent things. I'm, st I'm still thinking about Kai, what Kayo said about the Box and Whisper. I really like that idea. I don't know. I just I just like Box and Whisper. So um, so we have one more, one more person, uh, someone from the audience that is said, Franklin, uh, he said, the advantage of having this view is that you can put more useful information. So it's a standard deviation, which is correct, that allows you to remove the outliers as, as well. Thank you. Excellent idea. Excellent idea. That's what, that's what this is all about. Go ahead. Uh, you, you may also going to say that uh, what, one thing that I, again, if you're going into a meeting, you got an hour to, to do anything here. I think maybe I would add, add a, some kind of histogram for the number of jobs in each of those categories. So we don't know how many lead software engineer contractors we have versus how many group product managers we have. So it'd be interesting to know if the range is wider for the more people that are in that group. So that'd be the one thing I would add here. That's great. Yeah. And, and guys, what do you think about, uh, I don't know how this chart is ordering, but mm -hmm. do you think it, it can have any value to have ordered by, for example, the maximum range or something like that? Yeah. Maybe it can, I don't know, bring more value for this visualization. Yes. That's true. It's just, it, it's not, I'm not sure either that it's uh, I think it's by the average, but the, the average, average range, because if you look at how it's stacked, it would be by the mm -hmm. average. Yeah. Um, so some of these like directors have yeah. such a wide range that may be mm -hmm. growing out of proportion and it only has two, two in terms of the sample, right? Mm -hmm. So is that really an accurate representation? 
Yeah, the other thing that you can do with the two sample is just not include, in, include them, right? Sometimes, what will we include two? Uh, would that make sense to include two? Is that really, is there any value to include two only? Maybe this was a couple of thousand and uh, respondents and only two? I don't know. I don't know if I will include that. I, I think I will exclude it. Yeah. I would just go for top eight. Top eight yeah. values. Exactly. Exactly. So um, that's that's another thing. Um, so let's do this. Let's move to the next one. Uh, we're going to show uh, Andre um, Carvalho, his visualization for today. This was amazing. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone in the chat. You guys are doing a great job. Um, let's see. I think I have one more. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, let's see if we can make it a little bit yeah, larger. Yeah. Oh, wow. We, are, we have three visualizations. Let's start with the top first. OK. The, this is talking about the number of fatal working injuries by state. Okay. At least we have the year here, 2010. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And here we have um, a map, right, mm -hmm. where, where we can see the states. Mm -hmm. And we have the numbers of fatal working injuries for each state. Okay. And we have all the circles that are graded when the, we have number of cases, highest number of cases, right? Mm -hmm. And and also they added a coloring here in the map where we have if the number was increased, mm -hmm. it is blank. If it decreased, it is in this gray. gray. Yeah. Okay. So and then uh, this I I it's inter uh, it's very interesting because we have over the years the number of cases, mm -hmm. right, that we have, and we have in a, in our area uh, chart we have the 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 budget okay. for OSHA that is increasing and mm -hmm. it's making the number uh, going down. It, going down. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then they split right uh, the ways. Uh, which way uh, the the fatal injuries was happening? So, okay. transportation mm -hmm. incidents we have twenty one percent. Sorry, my Alexa is getting crazy here. <laughs> <laughs> no worry, no worry. This is life. This is life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, trans uh, transportation incidents represents the, most of the case. We mm -hmm. have ass uh, assaults and violent acts, contact with objects and equipments. Mm -hmm. Exposure to harmful substance or environment, falls, and fire and explosion. Okay. So that is okay. what, what I bring today. I can see some things that we can improve, improve. here in this visualization, okay. but I will let you guys first, yeah. I don't know, have the first impressions. Aaron, Aaron, what do you think, Aaron? Just keep it, 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 it it's, uh, make it a little bit smaller so you can see the whole thing uh, together. It's okay. A little bit larger, a little like halfway, a little bit. Yeah, okay, so what, right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the uh, I, these bubbles are a little overwhelming because that's all you you can really see in an instant. But mm -hmm. what what I do like that's kind of hidden is that the increase and decrease. It's just one mm -hmm. or the other. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, highlight those that haven't gone down and those that have. Um, I I liked that uh, separation. And the second one, I think it tells a, a good story of that of comparing the victims to the the OSHA budget, uh, mm -hmm. and it really shows that there there seems to be a, a great correlation there that they they spent a lot more money, they're getting the word out, and they're having mm -hmm. less problems. And then the the one at the bottom, um, I like the the use of those icons to help kind of st tell that story. So you don't have just have to read text. You can see at a glance that that second one is a gun, and that, um, mm -hmm. and the one at the bottom there is the person falling, and, the, and there's the the flames there. So I like the the storytelling of of this dashboard. Yeah, Elaine, can you make the his his screen just his screen larger so we can see the whole thing? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, just make it a little bit smaller so you can see the whole thing together. Okay. So, um, Mr. Mr. Andrew with the nice hair, what do you what do you think? Um, I like the the grayscale, like Aaron was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I think the tricky part is it could have decreased by one, and mm -hmm. I mean it would 
it wouldn't really tell you how much because there's no gradient scaling from that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I think is a little misleading is how many people live in California? I mean, this, <laughs> these numbers should be relative to the population, right? So when we look at that, I mean, uh, all those people, they're, they're probably out there wearing, wearing their sunglasses in California on the job, right? Relaxing, chilling by the beach. Um, a lot of people love California. So it, are some of those accidents um, caused by that? And I think the cool part that I liked, um, if you scroll down a bit, was it had in there the uh, injuries that were related to transportation. And I love the call out bubble which said 21% of those are specifically related to highway deaths. Um, so that immediately has me thinking like, hey, if we start doing uh, autonomous uh, trucking, are we going to see a decrease in that? Because is that from uh, drivers falling asleep at the wheel? Um, the other thing that I kind of see if we, if we scroll back up, um, which I'm, I'm pretty well aware of, is a lot of those states that have high death rates, if it's related to highway driving, they're pretty flat. Um, and in my mind, that's like, I've done some long trips and on those flat roads, it's easy to just kind of, oh man, I'm tired and uh, feel like you're nodding off a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Any of those like mountain states, I mean, you're a pretty engaged driver. Mm -hmm. um, and then those um, people, and this could be a gross generalization here, tend to be a little bit more outdoorsy, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe they've got better shoes instead of some, <laughs> some flip-flops and stuff. They've got closed-toed steel toe steel boots and uh, some of those different things. And hopefully they're, they're listening to OSHA a little better there. Um, Aaron, I'm going to flip some some uh, comments from the chat. We have a lot of them. I want all of them to be here in the, in, in the screen. And you yeah, I saw, I saw one of them. One of them I, I wanted to, to mention was the same as what they had mentioned was if you created yeah. this as a hex map, that way mm -hmm. you can see those smaller uh, states much clearer than, than way, the way it currently is. Okay. So I'm going to put some on the screen. Tell me what do you think. I'm going to put one from Kayo now. What do you think, Aaron? I'm going to put some of them in the screen. What do you think? Uh, about the colorblind, yeah. Uh, yeah. Any, anytime I'm making anything, I try to I, I default to the colorblind palette. And only stray from that if it's a requirement by the the end client. But I, I, it's it's a valid point to to be able to do that. Now someone else had mentioned that uh, the the contrast. If you scroll down, this, the contrast between just the gray and white to just a single red line. Uh, that that's a great contrast. So perhaps just not that red color. Maybe a, an orange would be uh, would would work in this case. You know, I, th I think that Len have a good point. I did like to, I agree with him. I, I like the storytelling. You know, we can talk about the colors. We can talk about certain things. But if you think about it, there is a good storytelling. It starts on the top and it goes down and it tells you kind of like a story. I, I personally like, the, I think it kind of like tells you the story. You can you can maybe do some improvements here or there, but the actual uh, storytelling, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, let me see. Uh, Ray have a really good point. He says... I agree on the color restraints, but the, in the map, you have a multi, multiple issues. It really should be normalized by population, and a hex map will be a better better to avoid the state size bias. That's exactly what you were saying. Yeah, yeah um, California and and Florida and Texas are and New York are all you know big uh, states with a lot of population. So obviously, mm -hmm. those are going to be bigger, um, but mm -hmm. yeah, proportionally, that it doesn't quite match. Yeah, and I think when we talk about a lot of the data not being available, right? So if we stuck to what, what is here, let, let's talk about free data for a second. Um, because I can tell you right now with it being 2010, uh, mm -hmm. this aligns with the US Census. So you could get okay. free US Census data um, if you're using platforms like Altrix. I mean, it's literally a few clicks away to kind of do an enrichment in this. And I think when we're first starting to tell stories um, and you're getting feedback like this, um, just keep in mind that there are data sources out there that are trusted, um, that are free that you can do the enrichment by. Um, and especially when we're talking about geographical areas, um, that's a lot of where you can 
uh, enrich with like U.S. Census data. Um, another example would be um, those injuries in those cases. They are probably related to the NCAIS codes, um, which could allow you to, to offer some clarity in regards to the budget. So um, maybe there's budget numbers related to this because as we're scrolling down, it it gives me that wow factor. Like if this were related to uh, short-term disability um, and trying to get you to buy it, I would definitely read through this and be like, okay, if I work in transportation, I definitely want some of that disability. Um, mm -hmm. But there's not really any action um, to be taken from this, which is, is something that I struggle with with a lot of dashboards um, is I, I really want it to be insightful to kind of take that um, to the next level. So one of the things that could be done is, and I've seen this in many visualizations from, you know, data visualization experts, let's say, it's instead of having a title, they have a question, right? So instead of having a title here, you can put a question. So when you read this visualization, you're kind of like answering the question while you're like looking at it, right? So that could be something that you can improve here. Um, I have Len from the chat. He says, possible problem, confusion, that I see. There are two ways of looking at this map. Real number of accidents and proportion of population. We may need to show this data both ways. That's true. Absolutely. They do Absolutely. they do that with um, a lot of the COVID stuff where like, you know, the populations are different wherever you go, but they do, you know, number of cases per hundred thousand or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. that that something like that could solve this problem. Yeah. And, and and Jamil, this map should be answering some questions, right? Mm -hmm. And for example, what is let's suppose all the states has the same number of population. I mm -hmm. know that is not true, but let's mm -hmm. suppose that which mm -hmm. state is has more cases. Uh, mm -hmm. I I don't see directly I answer. I need to to look and see oh what is the state. Uh, maybe we need to these circles, red circles, mm -hmm. can be uh different colors right to highlight mm -hmm. because the size of the circle mm -hmm. is the same for the same range so california mm -hmm. and texas is exactly mm -hmm. the same color exactly the same size yeah. we need to have a way to see what is our highest mm -hmm. uh number of case here in, in our mm -hmm. graph because we need to go through the point that we need to fix or improve in our business yeah so one of the things that could be that I'm thinking from all the everybody that is answering in the chat from Ray from Len, maybe we don't need a map. Maybe we should take the map away. We should do it a different way, right? Why will need we will need map? The map is getting everybody confused. If you think about it, from everybody that is answering in, in the chat, we can do like Len said. He said a hex map solve the proportion issue, but also introduce a national complexity issue, right? can be difficult to inter interpret from some users. So maybe we just take the map out and then maybe we do uh, this in a different way. Um, Ray said that if I have done this dashboard, a parameter to flip the, between the raw count and the rate. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's an interesting question. If you were telling the story, could they have done it completely without the map? I think so. I think it is possible. It could be. I mean, it will be it will be good to try it, at least try to see how that looks. I think the story is they're trying to show which states have the highest rates. So you'd have to replace it with something, even if it's a top 10 of, uh, of states. So, I mean, here's a here's an aspect in terms of dimensions, right? Typically, you want to start with the highest dimension and the highest aggregate. Mm -hmm. So when we look at all of these, right? I think the bottom two show different ways that it could be cut, but in terms of those aggregates, they're not shown like at the state level um, down below. So I would almost want to see, hey, as we increase the budget, a federal budget related to OSHA, right? We saw a decrease in those. Okay, where did that decrease occur by state or by particular uh, incident? Because that's the thing that the one on the bottom doesn't even show, um, which there's a spelling error in there, which has been mm -hmm. driving me nuts. But the, when we look at those percentages there at the bottom, it doesn't tell you how much those have changed. So all these other graphs have shown change. And then this one is the only one that's um, staying static. Okay. 
So if we were talking about this, contact your local senator, uh, state representative, et cetera, to commit action. And when we get down to this bottom one, where should we be asking them to allocate those do dollars or maybe new legislation and policy? There's no action here because I can't tell uh, which industry we should be concerned about uh, other than like transportation and in in incidences. And is that a problem in every state or some mm -hmm. states are doing better than others? Okay. So I have a question for everyone in here, all of you, Aaron and, and Andrew and Andrew. Do you think, so Robert suggested, could it, could a heat map will help? Do you think it will help? Do you think it will be more confusing? Uh, it can help on the, on the, to see the highest uh, state, right? But we will be lost in the decrease and increased coloring here. Okay. Or, uh, yeah. Perhaps you, you could, could just mix that with like uh, some kind of indicator, uh, a dot on the state that if it's above mm -hmm. or if it's above where it was last year, then the dot shows. And if it's not, then it's just mm -hmm. missing. So some some kind of like dual axis like that. Or a little triangle, like a little triangle arrow up mm -hmm. down, right? Just yep. right next to the yeah. number so you would know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the number. Okay, great. Oh, this is awesome. We're going to have to move to the next one. Um, thank you very much, everyone that is in the chat. Let's go to the last one. We're, we're close. We're close. We're doing amazing today. This is getting I'm great. Wrong. We're getting better. We're getting better. I'm telling you, like from the first one that we did this first time, I, I was I was scared. I'm not going to lie to you. I was nervous, but it's, we're getting better. We're, fig we're figuring it out how, how this works better. So let's let's put the, the, the next one and Aaron and Alain, the last one from Aaron. Is that the one? No. Let's talk about this. <laughs> oh, this, this, man. No, this isn't it. Come okay, on. Man, this my chat is gonna float. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All um, right, can you see that? Yeah, just make it a little bit uh try to increase your screen uh, size or something. Okay. I don't know if I can get any smaller. That that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna let Mr. Kim start and see what he thinks. We mm. so put, put all your hair and hats. Yeah, the hats, all that stuff. Yeah. I gotta put my thinking and, cap on here. Yeah. Nice. Oh, we're we're we already have someone from the Eric is, is beating you. He's beating me. Oh my goodness. I know it's race. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think when I'm looking at this, I'm I'm trying to understand why they're they're trying to do a dual access here when there are two different things that are being compared, right? Um that's a little tricky to navigate. Um I at least like that the degrees are uh ranked in a ranking order. So you can kind of see um, unemployment is uh, a little lower as a percentage in terms of uh, as you increase your learning, right? And then that median weekly uh, earnings is, is higher. Now, something that I find interesting that's missing from here, uh, just from experience, um, with with some family history is just because you have less unemployment right i think that could be for a couple different reasons or, or is that because individuals are retiring early or they're phasing out um and then the other question that immediately pops into my mind is this doesn't say anything about duration of unemployment um so when we look at the world today um, if you have a doctoral degree, how many of those positions are even out there? Mm -hmm. um, are there hundreds of positions that I could apply for with a doctoral degree? Or am I going to be uh, stuck at the top looking for a high paying salary like that and not be able to find it? Okay. So I think those are, are some big things. I love uh, the use of numbers here. Obviously, we could talk about utilizing different colors. And then it also tells us, hey, we should be trusting uh, this data because it's coming from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Okay. Okay. 
And I think keep keep it keep it um, the other way because it's hard to 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 look at if it's not um, large enough. Um, so that Andrew can see it, uh, just make it a screen larger, please. One thing that did confuse me about this was uh -huh. in the little text at the bottom, it uh -huh. talks about what, what this was, but it also mentions something about, um, in the black down below, it, says, it talks about Columbus. So perhaps that has something to do with the article I got it from. Uh, oh, yeah, it's, I see in the URL, it's, it's something from Columbus. So. If that's the case, uh, you'd almost want to see if this is something specific for a, a certain city to show where that city ranks compared to, to the rest of the of the data set. <laughs> um, is the is the thing that goes down? Is that kind of what is that? Is that the average? The the line go goes all. The it looks like it. Bottom? That's the yeah. average, kind of like the average. Okay. Um, so, Andrew, what, what do you see? Yeah, I was trying to get a relation between employment and median weekly earnings, and I don't know. Uh, for me, I have I I think no. There is no purpose to have it as a dual mm -hmm. axis. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would remove the left mm -hmm. side about the unemployment. And mm -hmm. if they need so mm -hmm. much to have this relation, maybe I will try to apply some coloring on the bars to mm -hmm. see, uh, for example, greater than 5% will be a different color or not just two colors, just, uh, uh, I don't know, we can pick eight colors and do a, a uh, I forgot the word, but uh, like a range. Yeah, about the color, so we can see, for example, uh, gradient, the, gradient range. Gradient, yeah, exactly. Gradient. Gradient range of colors. Yeah, based on the rates, something like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think the the purpose of the, or, or the storytelling that you're trying to to portray here is the higher the degree you have, the lower the un unemployment is. Um, yeah. But to Andrew's point, we don't know the number of mm -hmm. jobs that are available for that. If there's only mm -hmm. 200 people that have doc doctorals and, mm -hmm. and there's very limited jobs, you know, then perhaps that's why it's so low. But mm -hmm. I think my guess is based on how they've put these two axes together that that's what the they're trying to say. Yeah, I, I when I look at it, I mean, I I, I hate the colors. I, I think these colors, like Kaya said previously, we should not use these colors because these colors are not colorblind, right? They, they, it needs to be. It can be better colors than these ones. The other thing and, is, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Oh, sorry, Jamil. Uh, no, no. Uh, talking about the colors and even, mm -hmm. uh, let's forget about the colorblinds right now. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you see red and green, we are thinking mm -hmm. good and bad, right? Mm -hmm. So we have already this confusion just because the colors. Exactly, exactly. Because what, what is it? Why, why is it using green? Is it good? What is it good? What is it bad? That's yep. true. Um, we have Len, he said, and, and I agree with him. And he said, this is difficult to inter interpret and, and interpret. But he said, the metrics are related. That's true. You know, you have unemployment, you have media and weekly earnings, they're related. But there could be a better or better chart to represent this instead of using this dual axis. And I so, think he said, he said possibly represent as two individual bar charts. Correct, correct. So correct. here's something that I'm, I'm thinking of from a data science perspective. And as we're kind of pooling different data sources and maybe doing feature modeling uh, in regards to these sets, right? So we're talking about employment and maybe what optimal education is, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were trying to figure out, hey, what's the optimal spend in terms of my education, these two things may have correlations to that, right? Mm -hmm. So overall, what would be helpful is to see what is the correlation to either sustaining employment? Because that's really, you know, like you were talking about, mm -hmm. if I were to figure out what question am I asking here, how mm -hmm. much education helps you sustain employment how much education do you need to sustain employment and really when i look at this 
graph, it's it's not so much that I need to have a doctoral degree. That's not what I'm getting from this. What I'm actually getting is you just have to be ahead of everybody else, head of the average, right? Okay. And once you are, then you're in a good spot. And then ironically, it looks like there's a decreasing return mm -hmm. if you get to a doctoral degree and you're mm -hmm. better off with a professional degree, right? In the middle, in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so when you get that professional, yeah. go ahead. Aaron, can you make it larger? Can you make the screen larger? It's just I wanted to see something. I wanted to see something. Can you make the like yeah, increase increase a little bit more like in oh, okay, perfect. A little a little bit more if you can. Perfect. Okay. I know it's a lot, but it's fine. I just wanted to see it clearly. Um okay. Okay, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. Right there. I can't get any bigger. No, that's perfect. Leave it, leave it like that. That's perfect. That's perfect. I mean, I think this is so important, right? Right now, you know, how many people, you know um you know maybe they don't you know we know everywhere you go now it says that they're looking for people and and this could be super important right to understand this better uh what we can we do to retrain uh the workforce um and you can see yep. that after the right there in the bachelor's degree or in between the associate degree it's like what you were saying andrew that it's just it start leveling out right start like making more sense um I thought I think this was a good point that Andrew made was like this one. Th this has the highest dollar amount and the lowest employment. So unless you had to have a doctoral, why would you why would you do it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, a Andrew, check it in the chat what Len said. I want to see what you what you think about that. Uh, it, it's in the screen. It's on the screen right now. numbers yeah you and that's it. you can read it read it yeah that is something i mean that's why it took me a second to process it because i thought they were showing it as technically they are negative numbers right but it's negative relative to full employment but they weren't that's not how they're shown so basically mm -hmm. it'd be minus 2.1 percent of people are unemployed right so it's either you're employed and you're positive or you're not employed and you're a negative one, right? So if we were trying to get the total employment number, then that number on the left would make sense, right? But I think the red and the green also is what, just trying to draw attention obviously to negative versus positive is important. Mm -hmm. um, but neither of these I don't think are, are really negative or positive, right? Mm -hmm. um, because we can look at churn overall. And then uh, when we discuss even like less than high school diploma, what are those individuals doing? And how long does it take to retrain them as you guys are discussing? Because I mean, if we really think about it, as crazy as this will sound, um, those people who are going to get doctoral degrees, how many of them are working all eight years whenever they're working on getting that degree? So if you factor that in over lifetime employment, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. um, it should be your total earning potential over your lifetime that you should be looking at because you basically have eight years where you're not making any money, right? Right, right? Or you're making minimal money because you're doing one of those other jobs lower on that spectrum mm -hmm. as you're trying to work towards getting that doctoral degree. Correct, correct. So it was interesting. Just Go real ahead. quick, I thought it's interesting. Like, there's this, there's this jump right here, right, and then there's a jump right here. Yeah. The only jump you have over here is is just these two. So it's like if you have if you have some kind of diploma, you're you're better off. But then it, once you get into college, if you can just get an associate's degree, you're going to be it, again. It goes down. But like to go from associates to bachelor is only you know one percent. Uh, difference in in unemployment, but the the dollar amount it goes up substantially. Correct. Correct. So yeah. So is that really the type of work, Aaron? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's the type of work that's different? So before you finish your uh, bachelor's degree, do you feel like you're just in a different pool of work? Maybe different. Uh, Probably. There's a lot of a lot of uh, especially tech jobs, you know, it requires that bachelor's degree. And if you're if you only have an associates, then chances are if you're going head to head with somebody that does have a bachelor, that that they're gonna go with that other person. Just a, just a guess, I don't know. 
So I, we have uh, three people talking about in the chat, and I want guys, you guys' opinion um, about scatter plot. All right? This could be an, a solution. So Ray mm -hmm. Ray said, Erica Plymouth, I agree. A scatter plot, college plot. I'm sorry, will be better with a dot for each educational level that will leave you with a lot of space to do like annotations and call out numbers, right? Like something like that, and within the scatter plot. I I, I really like that. I think if you did. So let's talk about whenever you change the visualization, that tells a different story, right? Mm -hmm. So I think part of the selection of the visualization determines a story that you'll want to tell. So if mm -hmm. in the example, the story were to be, you should be striving towards a professional degree. If you did the scatter plot, mm -hmm. that's going to have the lowest unemployment and the highest earning potential, right? So mm -hmm. that one is going to look like the outlier versus the others. Mm -hmm. And then you can call that out by having grayscale on everything else and saying, hey, here's why you want to go for a professional degree, correct. because highest earning potential and lowest unemployment. Correct, mm -hmm. correct, correct, correct. And, and you want to highlight, think about it here is a little confusing. Oh, look, 2.1. What is that? Or 1.9. Hey, but in reality, that's what most people want. You don't want to be unemployed, right? You want to be employed. It's just kind of like, it's, it's, it's not telling the story uh, correctly. You know, it's just making you confused. But in, in a scatter plot, it makes more sense um, that you can see that story because that's the idea, right, of data visualization. What is the idea? Did you get that immediately that you understand that it's less confusing? And, and, and that could be something and in this chart that is, to me, it's confusing, right? Yeah, Yamil, once we're uh, done with our, our live session here, um, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take those data points. I'm going to put them in Excel real quick and, and push out a scatter plot. And I'll, mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, paste that into the comments uh, here for okay. this, this live feed so we can see what that looks like. OK, perfect. OK, thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else from the chat that wants to uh, have their opinion, anything that you wanted to say before we're almost, we're almost done today? Um, also, if you want to also, we want to also say to everyone, you know, we're always looking for anyone that wants to participate with us. Uh, you can uh, participate. You can be one of our panelists. We everyone is welcome. Um, you know, uh, so please uh, let, it, let us know if you know anyone else that would like to participate. Uh, everybody, like I said, is welcome. You will bring your visualization. We can do themes. Uh, it's a lot of fun, as you can see from today, and, and we all are learning something. Um, so that's the idea. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and, and Andre, uh, thanks for hopping on down there in Brazil. Appreciate you, yeah. you happening, coming on. Yeah, Brazil. Yeah, Brazil. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Andre. Um, so I'm going to ask Andre, and I'm going to start with Andrew. Andrew, um, what, what do you think? What, what was your experience? What, what do you, to encourage other people to participate? Uh, what, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've always loved these sessions. I've loved watching them. Um, obviously, we can get a little crazy with hairdos and yeah. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when we kind of talk about uh, different things that we're doing, mm -hmm. the thing that I miss the most about uh, conferences is, is just the engaging conversations that you have, right? And uh, we're seeing that void um, kind of taking place over the last couple of years. But now I think about what really allows you to, to kind of scale these conversations. And imagine if you have that touch point every week like we're doing right now, uh, participating and just hearing uh, what, what different people are thinking is important. And then also seeing how people respond to different visualizations because uh, everybody ends up with a piece of pie every once in a while, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> they may want to yeah. build it out. and. Yeah coming to realize, hey, we can we can do some sticks of beef jerky or some bacon, right? And mm -hmm. do those bar charts and, and roll it out. Um, so just kind of keeping some of that in mind um, really can can help you take some of your visualizations to the next level um, yeah. in your insights. Yeah. So Andrew, anything that you want to share about the experience today? What do you like? Or it's a lot of fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My uh, first time here and I love to participate and it was a pleasure. Thank you, Jamil and Errol, to, uh, to invite me today. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome to be interacting with the people in the chat mm -hmm. and with you guys as well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to spread 
best practice on data visualization because we are seeing there in every place, every customer that we are helping, we, mm -hmm. we see some visualization that is not telling uh, the best way, the history that they want. So exactly. uh, we have to use these sections and things that we know to spread these across different customers and where we are working on. Thank you. No, absolutely. Thank you so much. So, Aaron, anything that you want to say? I know that you always said almost the same <laughs> every <laughs> week that you, you want to say that yep. you don't want to learn something new. But if anything new today, that's good. Yeah, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, collaboration. Like, uh, again, if anybody has questions about their visualization or if they want to mm -hmm. just get mm -hmm. another set of eyeballs outside of, of the people that they normally talk to, we're mm -hmm. always available through LinkedIn. Uh, through mm -hmm. email however to, we will we'll help you guys to to get you the the, the best possible uh mm -hmm. if it's something that we don't know we'll find an answer for you so uh definitely collaborate with us and, and feel free to reach out whenever no that's that's true and if anyone just please know uh connect with us uh data meaning uh please find us on, on on linkedin we have a youtube channel where you can watch any of these sessions again um please uh like it's, uh, here's in the in the and here in the comments here in the caption below uh, follow us data meaning on linkedin we're doing this every week at 3 p.m 3 at 3 3 p.m every week we're doing the same thing we're always looking for like i said for participation so you can be a participant you can be like aaron like um andrea and andrew you can bring an, another and any nice hair Please. anything that you want we're you're we're gonna have Halloween, so that's gonna be unexpected. You know how Halloween is gonna be soon. Uh, but anyone that want to participate is welcome, and you know, and just spread the word. Um, and you, and we guarantee you're gonna have a lot of fun, and you're gonna learn a lot here. So let's let us know. And thank you so much. So this is the fifth uh, episode, right, Aaron? I think so. Yeah. Fifth. So we're going to the sixth soon, and we're gonna. I'm already. Per, I'm already thinking about um, some things I'm gonna do for the 25th show. I already have it on my screen here. What, what is that day? And um, it's gonna be amazing. We're gonna do a, a, a big celebration. So uh, see you next week, everyone, and talk to you soon. Thank you. See you guys. Connect with us. Yeah. Thank you.